Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? You know, I'm not doing too bad. Um, Ohio State defeats Rutgers. So that's a thing. It's a thing that happened. It's a good thing. It's a good, it thing. A good thing. Was it a great thing? Eh, I mean, you, you, you know, this is the best thing about going 9-0. And, and all that, that's all great. Um, was it a pretty game? Not necessarily. Ohio State uh, got the cover. They covered the spread. Yeah, did did a bit of did a did a little bit of last second, uh, did a little bit of last second scoring to make that to make that score look a little bit better than it was. Um, if we're honest, if you we're do doing, what you need to do, though, you do what you need to do. Sometimes you just sometimes you just got to win the game. Sometimes you just got to win the game, and like we, and we said it to our credit, Kyle and I said it. We said it on we said it on Thursday. Rutgers has a really good pass defense. Don't be surprised if Kyle McCord and the passing offense doesn't look great because because Rutgers has a really good pass defense. Don't be surprised if it's a little it's not it's not super pretty in the pass game. And then guess what? It wasn't super pretty in the pass game. But was everyone else being like, oh, but it's Rutgers. Yeah, they were. Does anyone ever listen to Kyle and I know they don't? We warned That's you. Fine. We'll keep doing what we we keep doing what we do. We warned you that the passing game was not going to look good this game. And by the way, it's the third week in a row we've done that. This is the third week in a row in which we've pay, played a pretty good pass defense. Everyone's everyone was like super low on McCord. Then everyone was getting super high on McCord. Now everyone's super low on McCord again. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that they played three of the best pass defenses in college football. I'm not saying Rutgers is a fantastic football team. They clearly aren't. They are totally one-dimensional on, on, on offense. And Ohio State uh, was able to run on them with, you know, really good efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. But, Trivia, Trivia, on five, Trivia on 5.8 yards per yeah. carry there. That's that's a that's a pretty good game. That's a pretty good game there. Oh always, yeah, always great to see Trevion um, back to his old self. And I know there's a lot of people at, uh, last year and even the beginning of this year. Oh, is is Trevion running back number one? Is is he really yeah, the yeah. best running back? He he yes, guys. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with with all due respect, to everyone else on the team. Yeah. Uh, and everyone, again, everyone was super down on Henderson and like, oh, da, da, da. it's like, guys, he was injured last year. Like, even when he was healthy last year, he was injured last year. Like, he, you know, he he lost all of his lateral quickness because he had, uh, I believe it was, was a plantar fasciitis, I think he had. Um, and then everyone was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about Henderson. Like, y'all, y'all, y'all have the memory of a goldfish sometimes, I swear to God. But yeah, the Ohio State offense uh, didn't look good in this game and not the passing offense. Anyway, Henderson looked good. Henderson was the one bright spot on the offense, if we're being honest. Although I will say this, I thought the offensive line um, at the very least from a running perspective looked pretty good in this game. Like, I feel like we had seen some improvements over the past couple weeks, but it was also kind of hard to tell because both Penn State and Wisconsin have really good front sevens. And I was not that they looked great in those games because they didn't. But I had seen them play just as bad against bad competition. And like the fact that they didn't get totally owned by the Penn State and in Wisconsin offensive lines gave me a bit of give me a give me a bit of hope that they might actually look pretty good when going against. And Rutgers has a really good se secondary, but they're. Yeah, I think they have a good linebacker too, but like they they not anything impressive on the defensive line. Um and you know, not all their linebackers are 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 all that great. So I was like, yeah, let's see what the offensive line does against Rutgers. And I tell you what, they look pretty good. Now did they look pretty good based off of the uh average standards that I have 
that I that I have expectation for this offensive line at this point? Yeah. But they still looked pretty good. They opened up some really good holes for Henderson to run through. Um but, they didn't do yeah, that it also, consistently. No, they they didn't, but I mean it it's got to be said though Rutgers was without their their starting nose tackle as yeah, well. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And before, before the before the game started, it was I think a, a few of us in our Discord, uh, by the discord.thisloopcast.com, always be plugging. Um, we, we said you got to you got to give the ball to Travion. Got to give the yeah. ball to Travion here. It's this was the type of game we thought that Ohio State would try to dominate their will on the ground there, and yeah, at times they they did. At times they did, and at other yeah. times, especially in that first half, no. No, they did it. That first that first yeah. half was, oh, there was a lot of, a lot of issues, a lot of concerns, especially on third downs. I think they went oh, fifty percent. Well, pull, in, in the game they went fifty percent. Um, yeah. So I'm if I sure. so I go by if I compare the first half, Ohio State in the first half went zero for five on third downs. There you go. Um, now second half, like the second half was good enough that they, you know, brought the third down percentage all the way up to 50%. <laughs> yeah. So second half six for seven on, on third downs. Yeah. They, they really just started feeding Henderson a lot. And yeah, I mean, it wasn't a good game through the air. Um, no, and that's, and that's was by, uh, yeah, that's what Rutgers was going to do. And you saw that right. they were just double covering Harrison, which why he only had four sometimes catches. Uh, yeah, sometimes triple. That's why he only had four catches for, uh, what was that, 25 yards and a pair of touchdowns there. But I was re- really surprised that there wasn't really a lot more that was going to happen there. Yeah, you, Trevion got himself um, a good game to lead the team in receptions and yardage. Five catches, 80 yards. But I thought Just I would see a little air. bit more. F- yeah, through the air. Yeah. I thought I would see a little bit more from from everybody else who's not <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. here. Uh, Emeka still didn't look like 100%. I mean, there was times he, he, looked, he looked pretty good, but he's still not 100%. Uh, finally got to see quite a bit of G. Scott made that great touchdown catch. No case uh, over in, the in first this game. But, it, but yep, he, no Cade Stover. He makes a great catch to get a touchdown, but he also dropped like the entire makeup mm-hmm. of the first half is different if he catches that ball and he didn't. Like he he I don't know if he's getting the touchdown on that play, but it was a crucial uh third down. And he definitely would have converted and he definitely had some room to run. Um it was a crucial, crucial drop on on his part. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know everyone, I feel like people are back on the, we hate McCord train. Um, but I'm telling you what, like he's not getting a, a, a ton of help. Um, the offensive line didn't do terribly in this game. Um, but he still had some undue pressure on him at times. Um, you know, he checked the ball down to Henderson a lot in this game. Like he was very check down heavy in this game. Um, Rutgers seemed very happy to just sort of play a shell and to, you know, let their secondary play. And, you know, like I said, Rutgers has a really good secondary. There's some very talented guys in that secondary. This, this is not your, this is not your grandpa's Rutgers. And we said this on Thursday. This is the best Rutgers team that Ohio State has ever played, and I don't think it's actually all that close. There's much, much improved Rutgers team from even last year. And the, and the Rutgers team they played last year, much better than the Rutgers team from the year before. Like, Shiano is legitimately improving this team. Um, you know, this is just their third loss on the year. Um one of their other losses was to Michigan in a similar football game. 
Um, was the other one? Have they played Penn State yet? Was the other was the third one Penn State, Kyle? Or did they? Uh, no, it I, was I, no. Yeah, it no. Was they, Iowa, right? No, no. They play Iowa this upcoming week. No, they lost to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's who it was. So yeah, I mean, respectable loss, Wisconsin. Um, don't look at what happened to Wisconsin this weekend, but yeah, it's um not not a great showing for Ohio State in this game. But again, this is not your grandpa's Rutgers. This is a very good Rutgers team. It, it is what it is. And, you know, Ohio State does win and does win. They cover even, you know, you win by 19 points. The final score tells a different story than I think the game. I know it absolutely tells a different story than the game. I mean, it has to be said, Ohio State was losing at halftime. Yeah, they were. They were, but but credit to only being down two at halftime. That defense, the defense on in the red zone, was the different difference maker in this game here. Well, that's like, yeah, like it, the, this the sixteen points is a lot of points for this defense this season. Yeah, I mean they're only averaging ten a game here, and, and with a Rutgers offense that we were not we were not worried about this Rutgers offense at all. Well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm saying that the defense or the offense and the special teams, Mirko put on, and then there was a turn and there was an intercept. Like the, the defense was put with their backup against the wall, a bunch, especially in the first half. And be, you know, because of the offensive struggles, the defense was, uh, Rutgers killed time of possession in this game, 35, 35 minutes to 24 minutes. You know, I'm, I'm well, obviously rounding a little bit there, yeah, but well, well, that's because they rushed the ball 43 times and, yeah. they're, and when they're getting over five yards a pop. Yeah. Yeah. That, that time of possession is, I'm, I'm honestly surprised it's not more than that. <laughs> well, it's, it's helping that Ohio state was also rushing the ball. Do you have time of possession just for the first half, Kyle? I do. I do. Let me I'd be pull interested it to see here. if it's a similar first first half time of possession, 16 and a half to 16 and a half for Rutgers, 13 and a half for Ohio State. Second second half. So it's even worse. Rutgers than... Rutgers pretty much doubled. Yeah. Got 19 and a quarter and Ohio State had 10 and 3 quarter minutes in the second half yeah offense was not doing the defense a ton of favors um time of possession wise and the defense uh you could tell was was getting a bit gassed uh Rutgers was running the ball uh incredibly well against Ohio State uh we told you they have a good running back yeah too well (laughs) um we told you they had a great running back uh we told you that their quarterback was a great runner both of those things you know, turned out to be incredibly true, but like it needs to be said, Rutgers wins time of possession by 10 minutes, nearly 10 minutes. Well, no, over 10 minutes. Um, Rutgers gets seven more first downs. Um, although they were, they didn't get four of those via penalty. And some of those were mm. bad. Um, probably the biggest stat here, Jared. The biggest stat Ohio here. State does win. Ohio State does win uh third down conversion, getting two additional conversions off of one less try. And Rutgers uh nearly no over oh, oh, 33, 33 yards more, 33 additional yards over Ohio State, like Rutgers played a hell of a football game. Mm-hmm. They they did, yeah. And and seeing that Rutgers had more yardage there, yeah, it's definitely showed definitely showed the offensive struggle Ohio State had here. Now we'll see these next two games here. I, I expect Ohio State to be able to do a lot better offensively in these next two weeks here, leading up to the, the final so. battle up north. Uh, but the but the key stat here, Jared, that we talked about for eight straight eight weeks here, 
Ohio State finally gave up a 40 plus yard play in this game. Yeah. Yeah. There's that fumble ruski uh, <laughs> to uh, Manangai running it down the middle for 45 yards on a fourth and one. That was, that was a great play call. I'm not even it was. mad. It was. I mean, Shiano she, had to pull out the tricks there. And you know what? You know, kudos to him compared to Franklin when Franklin had nothing. Like, Rutgers pulled out a lot of tricks here. They did what they need to do to make it close. It's just Ohio State made, made more plays down down the end there. And that pick six was the game changer. That's what that's what um, changed the uh, the flow of the game there from from Hancock. I, yeah, I mean, Han, well, he got you got to credit Proctor on that play as well. Yes, I mean, yeah, the play, the play doesn't happen if it's not for Proctor, but I mean, Han, Hancock find, finds the path to get him going. What is that? 96 yards or whatever it was. I think it was quite but that yeah. much, was it? But it was it was long. Yeah, um, again, like, it's not the prettiest game, but you win in advance. Um, I, I never at any point in this game felt like Ohio State was going to lose. Um, I've not felt, I've not, like, felt honest fear that Ohio State is going to lose at any point this season. Have you, Kyle? Mm -mm. No, I, I haven't. I mean, I mean, there was definitely some worrisome in, in the uh, spikes in the Notre Dame game, but I never even felt like I not even during Notre Dame, not even during Penn State that I even consider we were going to lose. Um, yeah, and I don't know. Like, you know, it's again, it hasn't always been pretty this year, but it is nice to be a game into Ooh. November and yeah, having and we, and never at any point felt like we were going to lose. Yeah, we've been, we've been spoiled these past number of years with the just the spectacular quarterback play that we've had and the just the talent offensively here. It's just yeah, it's just a totally different um view, different team that we we're not accustomed to seeing. Now, a lot of us who've watched Ohio State uh, especially, especially in the early Trestle days here, this kind of brings back some memories here where you, yeah, they don't score a lot of points, especially when it came into Big Ten play. But you know what? Defense, defense stood up, stands up, and win, wins the wins the games and ultimately wins championships. We would have never complained about a thirty-five to sixteen win in the Trestle era. <laughs> yeah that that's a wow uh, it's, not even, it's, it's, it's not even it's not even it's not even trestle ball <laughs> are you kidding this is we'd be at, a 35 16 win over here smoking cigars live on the show are you kidding yeah that's a blowout this exactly offense. that's a trestle this is a trestle era blowout scoring 35 points yeah <laughs> except that one year except that one year the one year being the difference, the Troy Smith senior campaign. We actually blew some teams out that year. Um, but aside from that year, you know, that's just I'm not look. how Trestle played ball. They scored 30. Uh, am I looking at the, oh, I'm looking at the wrong year. I was, I was curious about how many times, how many, what was the closest get? What was the closest game here? Um, in 2002, Spikes, is that a Indiana. confirmed stat or are you kidding? Kidding? Oh, okay. I thought, I, my mind was going to be blown if, if that was actually true. No, they scored 34 points against Minnesota in the first weekend. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Kyle, yep, are, right, we, back, back. are we ready to yeah, hand out our grades? Let's get out the grades here. So let's let us start off with the coaching staff here. Defense defense played very well, it, despite despite letting up two hundred and thirty two on the ground. It's hard for me to say that, but I think overall I thought the defense played pretty well. Offense struggled first half, but got 
but came around in the second half and did what they need to do. So I'd say, I'd say maybe a B, B minus. I'll, I'll just stick with a B. I, I, it's heavily carried by the defense here. Really, really like what I see for the defense. Now, the injuries are starting to stack up here. Definitely yeah. a little concerning here, but the, this is a championship um, caliber defense here. Yeah. Um, ho- hopefully they get some some guys back, especially in the secondary. Um, that being said, I thought everyone, even after Proctor left, I thought everyone played well still. So um, shout out to the young dudes who came into the game and, and played well. C minus if you let special teams coaching grade have any weight. Um, well, not not. Not especially, but I don't think it wasn't a coaching decision. If you're talking about the uh, fake punt, I don't believe that was a coaching decision. Um, yeah. All right. Quarterback. Quarterback okay, so here. I, quarterback, I'll, I'll just give a C. I'll give a C here. Yeah, he has a, he has a interception in this game, but had three touchdowns in this game as well. 19 for 26. Uh, Good, good percentage throwing, but yeah, I I'd like to see a little bit, a little bit more from Kyle McCord. I, everybody's expecting a little bit more, so I'll, I'll just say a C. I don't know, man. He only misses seven passes on the day. Two of those were dropped. You can't see the graphic, just you. Yeah, it must be just you. I'm. I do have my camera on. Um, the only two of them were drops, um, 7.3 average. He was forcing, he was forced to throw underneath a lot, which, um, was, you know, I think Rutgers game plan. So I respect him for going into check down mode because that's what was required. He really only tried to force it once and he got his hand slapped for it. Um, I really don't feel like it was a bad McCord day. I, I honestly don't. Uh, I think he needs a little bit of help from people not named Marv or Trey. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about it. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a B. All right. All right. Running back here. Trey's a, Trey's a monster. He's a he's a human highlight reel here. Uh, a A for the A for the running back here. A for the running back. Yeah, I'll 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 go with an A as well. I feel like someone warned right. us their secondary was good. Spikes, I already took that victory lap. I'm not going to do it again. Um, <laughs> All right, offensive. <laughs> it's a, it's a no, oh. Spikes. I appreciate it. All right, offensive line here. So you let up one sack. Uh, I did look of the 22 carries. Four of those carries went for zero or negative yards. Uh, so I, th- I thought I thought the offensive line did a, I think as you said meant before, Jared, okay. They did okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, but but it is definitely a lot better. Than what we've seen recently here, so I'll give him a little bump up. I'll say I'll, I'll give him a B. I'll give the offensive line a B here. Um, I always like to say that I grade based off of expectation, and like I've I've personally given up that the offensive line is going to be anything spectacular this year, but I do think that they're getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go B plus. So. I give them credit for getting better, but I think that the we're 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 paying for recruiting sins of the past couple of years. Less penalties, right? Yeah, I mean that's certainly a thing to work on. Um, but hey, at well, least it's, the pen- at least at least uh, they're not the LSU center. Let's see penalties zero penalties. Zero penalties by the offense in this game. All five were from the defense. 
Uh, is that? I thought there yeah, was like a, was nope, there, there was, was a, there like a hands? No, there was a pass interference, pass interference from Proctor, pass interference from Styles, an offsides, personal foul, which was hands to the face by um, Mike Hall, and then okay. there was the the unsportsmanlike, which was I thought um, BS, uh, terrible call from, on Ty um, Leak. Yeah. Yep. I remembered the hands to the face being a guard, but I guess it was I guess it was my call. My memory yep, failing he was, me yep, on that just, one. He, he was he was just trucking him. He, he yeah, just, no, that was that one was, was a good call. Me. That one was a good call. The Ty Leak call was a bad call, my, but my my call did that shit. Um, mm-hmm. What was the penalty on the? Um, it was the quarterback going low on. I uh, I'm going to guess it was a corner. Oh yeah, and you can't you can't do that. Like he he dove low to the cor- to the corner's uh, knees legs area, and you can't you can't do that. Yeah, you can't take out a blocker by going low on them. So, but it was obviously waved off. All right. Um, All right. Tight ends. Tight end. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go C here. Um, That's what I was thinking. The 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 drop. The drop, especially if we're talking about like first half optics, the G Scott drop was devastating. I'll, I'll give a C plus just because of that. Just because of that uh, great touchdown catch. So I, I, was, I would say a C plus. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, G Scott is also there's like a lot left to be desired from a run blocking perspective as well, and that's also factoring into my grade. Mm-hmm. is gird a walk-on yes at least he i i don't know if he had i don't know if he was given a scholarship but i know he started as a walk-on the touchdown um, was nice though it wasn't nice no it was definitely nice it's just according according yeah. to the scholarship grid here um doesn't look like gird is okay um, I, I, I know he's, he's a fifth year senior. Um, and if he was on scholarship, it would like, he, he started as a walk on at the very least. I I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. All right. Wide receivers. I, I, I got, I got to give a, I got to give a C minus. I got to give a C minus for the wide receivers here. This, this is supposed to be the best receiving core in the country here. Yeah. The, Rutgers secondary is good, but you know what? The, these wide receivers are better. Like you gotta, I, it's it's tough looking at. You see, Harrison only four catches. Amika had four catches. Yes, yes, Amika wasn't all himself, but that's that's your production there. And then two from Tate. That that's it there. Like, no, nah, that that's not the expectations here. So your leading receiver was your running back five receptions for 80 yards the your next highest your actual your your leading receiver who's actually a wide receiver carnell tate two catches for 31 yards mecca Which, by the way four catches for 29 yards marvin harrison Which, four catches for 25 yards there there there's some rutgers cornerbacks who uh earned themselves some draft spots in this game at the expense of the Ohio State wide receivers, mm-hmm. um, which, by the way, dude, again, I grade we're... I grade based off of expectations. I expect the wide receivers to be great. They were not. I'm giving the wide receivers an F. I'm I'm giving them a higher than than that F there, just because I th- I think their perimeter blocking. A lot of those were really, really well blocked by Marvin Harrison and Fleming. I, I thought they did really well on the run block scheme. So I'll, I'll give them some credit there. Cool. Get more than 30 yards in the air. <laughs> um, which, by the way, like Tate, we're, we're, we're seeing a glimpse of what we're going to see next year. Yeah, yeah. He's getting he's getting more reps earlier. For sure. All right, moving on to the defensive line here. It's hard to give the defensive line a good grade when you give up 
What was the yeah. number? 200 and... 232 yards. Yeah. 5.4 per rush. Again, we have really high expectation for this defensive line. Um, I don't, I don't know how I give him anything better than a D. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was thinking of a D plus as well too. So that not, not what we're, not what we're wanting to see from this defensive line here, but yeah, they, they got to do better. They got to do better. Linebackers on the other hand, I thought the linebackers played played a lot better than the defensive line here. Eichenberg had himself a, another great game, double-digit tackles. Cody Simon played a lot in here, and he had himself a good game as well. So I th- I thought the line, linebackers did all right, but they still they still contribute to how many all the rushing yards that Rutgers had in the in this game here. So I'll, I'll give them a little bit better grade than the than the defensive line, so I'll just say a C. Mainly steal some bad angles, too. Uh, Cody Simon had 10 tackles. Eichenberg had 10 tackles. Are, are you saying steal on the... Had some whiffs, mainly steal some bad angles, too. Yeah, uh, on the whiffs, yeah. Tommy stood some guys up. Yeah, I thought... I thought... I thought that... Tommy had a fine game and Simon had a fine game. Um, it's very weird that what, wherever you got that stat sheet from Kyle, that they denote everyone, almost everyone's position, but only almost everyone's and not Cody Simon's. It's just weird. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, what did you say? What was your linebacker grade? C. I think a C is fair. All right. All right, and the corners. I thought the corners played pretty well. Uh, yeah, you're you're without you're 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 without Burke, and then you're you're without your two starting safeties as well. And so, in in comes uh, in comes Matthews, in comes um, Hancock. Got to see the ball. Got to see the uh, field a lot more there. Hancock got himself a interception. In this game, ended up being a pick six. I I thought the I thought the corners played pretty well, so I'll get I'll give the corners a B. I thought I thought they played pretty well. Yeah, it's hard for me to give them like a great grade, only because um, the the Rutgers quarterback just has severe accuracy issues. Uh, so it, it's hard for me to like super praise the the corners i will go slightly higher um i'll throw the plus in specifically for the touchdown um yeah i'll throw the plus in specifically for the touchdown but we'll go b plus simon had right. maybe simon had tackles on special teams that's the reason from no position he he i think he played more than chambers or at least as much as chambers Also, we didn't kick off um, that many times. No, Cody. Nope. All, all of Cody's Simon's tackles were on defense. How do you figure teams. that out that quickly? I, I, I got the, I got the, I got the stats here, buddy. Uh, where do you have stats that specifically denote special teams versus how? Okay. You know, I'm just going to believe Defen- you. Defensive plays there. God. Okay, Kyle, Kyle, but it's still though, you read that very quickly. I'm impressed, Kyle. I'm, I'll say I'm impressed. Um, All right, we're, we're moving on to safeties. Safeties, I'm going to go a little bit lower. I mean, really? Yes, I, I am. Yeah, I, I thought that, especially in the second half, uh, the maybe it's, maybe it's wrong for me to give them a lower grade, but Proctor goes out, and you know Rutgers. Rutgers took advantage of that and really picked on Matthews a lot. And Matthews is a corner. 
Matthews was a corner. Yes. Do you mean uh, Hartford? I'm sorry, Hartford. Hartford. Thank you. Hartford. Hartford comes in and they really picked on him there. I thought Hartford yeah, played I, well. well. I mean, he's the fourth safety. And when I say fourth safety, I'm not I'm not counting the what is essentially the nickel cornerback. I'm, I'm sorry, that's a nickel corner. Um but you know, if we talk well, about gonna, strong safety and free safety, like we're down to the I know he gave yeah, he gave up like one pass, but I thought they went at him a lot because he was like the new guy in there. And I thought he held his own more often than not, to be honest with you. Uh, Proctor had a great game before he left. Um yeah, I, I thought I'm, I'm I'm giving I'm giving a B minus, just just slightly lower than the corners. And, and I thought Styles played well too. You said B minus? Yes. I, I I think I think you're wrong. I'll be honest. I'm gonna give him an A. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. And special teams. I, get, I gotta give a I'm I'm going yeah, F. I get I'm I'm gonna D. Like I the Mur Mur Murko, like what what are you doing, buddy? It's two weeks in a row. Well, two weeks in a row. Not not specifically for running when he shouldn't have, which is what I was. But like, what what are you what are you doing? Why? That was a very inoperative. Like, I understand like why he if you're if you're Ryan Day. A lot of people like, well, why does he even have the freedom to make that choice? I'm sorry if I have a fourth year punter who's a grown ass man. I, how old Mur Murko is is not a college kid. Uh, he's like 27 or something. Um, I have Murko, who's like I said, an adult fourth year punter. And yeah, I'm going to say, hey, if it's wide open. And you can and you can run and only that, like he's an actual athlete, like he's an Australian football player, right? He's not like he, he is an actual athlete. Yeah, I'm going to tell him, hey, you know, I trust you. You've been in the program for a long time. If you feel like you can get it, go ahead and go. I, I don't I don't blame Day at all for putting that sort of trust in Mirko. Um, I, I, I want to know what the hell Mirko saw. Cause like, I have to assume that the instruction you're given is if it's wide open, go not if you're bored, go <laughs> cause it, it obviously wasn't there. And it's not like it, it's not like, Oh, if he had just beat that one guy, it was wide open. Like it, he was totally penned in. Yeah. All right, and that is our that is our grades, Jared. Uh, those Ready are to move grades. on to the Buckeye leaves here. Buckeye leaves. Um, I already got mine filled out, Kyle. Where do you got? Uh, you want to start? Should I start? Where? How do you want to start? Well, you're starting because you you started ahead of me, so you 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 got the you got the the right answer for the offense. I mean, you you don't have to pick a different one than me. Right, well, like that's I, not, I, I am. Uh, the, the, I am. Those though. aren't the rules. Well, I am. So, Travion Henderson, uh, as Kyle already alluded, it, it was the right answer. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it just was the right answer. So, yeah, Travion Henderson gets my offensive Buckeye Leaf. Chat, who do you want for a Buckeye Leaf? While Kyle tells us who he picked. Yeah, even even with the one even when the one drop in the first half there, I'll, I'll give mine to G Scott. Uh, I thought I thought him coming in over, you know, coming in to get a lot of playing time with uh, Stover being out, three catches. He had that really great touchdown catch there. I'll I'll give mine to uh, to, to Mr. Scott Jr. There. Uh, chat. Do you have an opinion? Oh, it it wasn't scrolling. My apologies. Uh, Spike um, says Trey. 
Um, Connor Stallions for resigning. Um, Trey, everything <laughs> Trey, extremely clutch. Yeah. Uh, defensively, uh, I think I think both of our picks are from the critical <laughs> play in the yeah. second in the third quarter. There. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jared, uh, Jared goes with Jared goes with Proctor and I go with Hancock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, I thought Proctor even up into that point was having a great game. I hope he's OK. Uh, he leaves after that play. It's apparently not a concussion. It's what I assumed it was because it was a it was a big hit. It was a legal hit. Um, I know I know when they threw a flag on the play that I immediately thought oh no it's it's targeting but when they showed the the end zone camera it was obviously not targeting and then it turned out it was uh the quarterback going low on a blocker um so it was nothing but yeah, he said he said his head was ringing after that play but felt fine to return to the sideline like so he's um, now saying it was his head ringing Proctor met with the media after the game and said his head was ringing after the play, but that he felt fine after returning to the sideline. Well, I'm getting mixed messages. Um, hopefully he's OK, because if his if his head was, quote unquote, ringing, I don't know what you call that other than a concussion. Mm hmm. But, yeah, uh, hopefully you know, major. Yeah. Uh, you know, take a week off. It's Michigan State. I think Ohio State's favored by 30. Michigan State's a bad football team. Take a week off. Get your head right. Our doctor isn't no. here, is he? Um, no, no. Uh, Gangland is not currently in the chat. But I know, like, I'll listen. I'm not a doctor, but I've had uh, my fair share of concussions. Um, if if the patient tells you my head is ringing, um, that is grounds to take his helmet away. <laughs> you you are in the protocol. That's yes. I, I'm not a doctor, but um, wild card, wild card, Buckeye Leaf chat. Let us know who you think you should. Who you guys are going to give your Buckeye your uh, wild card Buckeye Leaf to? I'm going Kyle McCord. Um, and I know that's going to be controversial. I know a lot of people um, have turned on Kyle McCord at this point. I will once again point out that Ohio State has for three weeks in a row played really good pass defenses and that the wide receivers are and the offensive line are not doing McCord a ton of favors right now. Um, the offensive line we knew was going to be a struggle this year, although like I will say this again, they are getting better. And they're not, they're not, you know, we all sort of hoped for the 2014 rags to riches story of the offensive line. You know, we had the rags. I don't think we're getting to riches, but they are getting better. Um, but the wide receivers out and I mean, outside of the two touchdowns, even microfiber rags yeah but the really good ones that have the silver in them like still rags but good ra but they're good rags like there's some very soft towels um they're those terry cloths i mean like but a good terry cloth um, but th they're getting better. Uh, my, my real issue right now are the wide receivers. Um, you're supposed to be the best in the country and you did not play like it last weekend. And quite frankly, outside of Marv, the wide receivers have not been overly impressive this season. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm going to go with Sonny Styles for mine. I'll go with Sonny Styles. Thought he had himself a pretty good game. Uh, he didn't have that forced fumble in there. Unfortunately, Ohio State couldn't recover that one. But yeah, I'll give mine to Sonny Styles. Yeah, yeah. I thought Sonny Styles had a great game. Um, yeah, with with Ransom out and 
probably not expecting to see. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to see Ransom back this season or not, but what we know right now is that Sonny Styles can play that position and he can play it very yes, well. He can. Um, yes, he can. You know, obviously the, the hope the the hope right now is that Josh Proctor comes back. I was going to say as soon as possible. He, if he wants to take the Michigan State game off, take the Michigan State game off. But Malik Hartford looked good. Um, I I think, like I said, I think Rutgers specifically tried to target him. And outside of maybe one play, he absolutely took that challenge. And I, I thought played really well. Knowles has confidence in Styles. I have confidence in Styles, too what i don't count <laughs> he did he was my wild card there you go malik hartford malik hartford your wild card spikes if so that's a good pick the one question we have in the mailbag here is uh uh just making sure i yep it is but guys i wanted to make sure because our Discord folks here keep changing names, so I want to make sure I'm getting the right name here. So, uh, Zach they're, here they're says... They're not just changing names. Like, we're practically turning into a role-play server with everyone changing their names to yeah. specific uh, people. He says here, this team needs to get tougher offensively. Do you agree? Tougher offensively? Yes. yes. I'm, I, 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 really th- I really think the biggest thing is just efficiency just efficiently like the team efficiency goes in spurts yes the team team goes in spurts where they look good it's like hey this you got some momentum this is what we should be doing and then whether it's penalties or drop passes poor blocking it just sputters then like just not consistent enough yeah efficiency and consistency um are bigger concerns for me than toughness like i i do feel like they've developed a certain amount of toughness um honestly at this point if, if we're going to talk about if we're going to talk about ryan day's favorite thing in the world which is toughness um i'm more concerned about the defensive line than anything else um one of my big takeaways from this game honestly is what happens when we play michigan and Michigan puts two tight ends, a fullback and a running back on the field and decides to run straight at us. Because if this Rutgers game's any indication, it's not going to go well for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my big concern of the moment. Um, that being said, Michigan are a bunch of cheaters. Um, I've heard there's been reports, there's been rumors. Kyle. You know what? A lot of rumors. Be, you you know what might be fun if Harbaugh gets suspended uh, before this episode comes out, or at least before people listen to it. Because like, even if it comes out Monday morning, um, then you know maybe they don't listen to it till Monday night or Tuesday. I'm just saying, like. Right, listen, maybe. more more worried about that i just hope <laughs> ohio state has like because I, I don't care if connor stallions got fired i hope ohio state has like a brand new signaling system in place for the michigan game because presumably they they were already scouted and that information may have already been passed along St- stallions could still be doing all the bullshit he's been doing and then just emailing info to the team through some sort of they they probably all have a uh what's the uh a telegram channel they probably all have like a, a some sort of telegram channel and they're just passing signal information back and forth like is that a absolutely insane thing to think could be happening yes Within the context of the insane shit we've heard about this story so far, is it, though? (laughs) At this point. Exactly, Spikes. 
shocked. Would you actually be shocked to find out that Stallions was still doing shit for Michigan behind the scenes? No, the, the greatest things right now is is the whole thing about pointing or pointing or having members of Ohio State hacking into Michigan's computers. No, 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 no. It's not. Well, first off, the accusation right now is that there's some sort of there's some sort of personal private investigation gation firm that's linked to ryan day or the ryan day crime family and that that is somehow uh the firm responsible for i don't care you know what? let's just say it's all true let's say ryan day reached out to his brothers and the family friend who has a i i forget all the details let's say all of that's true good if ryan day Let's just say if it's all true and I have no idea. Let's say Ryan Day hired his family friend and his brothers to bring down Michigan's cheating scandal and he did it out of his own pocket. Give that man a lifetime contract. <laughs> Yo. Woody once refused to buy gas in Michigan and people haven't shut up about it for 50 years. Ryan Day hired a private investigation firm to take down Michigan. Not buying, not buying gas in the state of Michigan ain't got shit on that. Let's be real. What an amazing story. I hope it's true. Yeah. I hope it's true. Because if Michigan's defense at this point is we're going to tattle on Ohio State for tattling on us. Oh, glass houses, I suppose. And assume he still is. How dare we share the fact that they cheated? Exactly. It would be worse if he had the ability to do it and didn't try. That's what I'm saying. Ryan Day's got connections. Like he actually does. I think one of his brother is or was a fed or something. I don't know. I, I, I need to stop sharing shit that i read that i read on reddit because i don't know how much of it's true and how much of it isn't true but don't fuck with the days that's what i'm saying the ryan day crime family is out to get you i'm all for it by the way it's not ratting if it's not your if your people that's just called counterintelligence what an amazing chapter in the Ohio State Michigan rivalry, if all of this is true. I want this all to be true. I want I want every single story about Connor Stallions to be true. I want every single story about Jim Harbaugh to be true. And I want every single story about Ryan Day to be true. I want <laughs> all of it to be true. We have we have Connor Stallions who is a former military guy who's at least advertises himself as some sort of expert code breaker. And Ryan day allegedly reaches out to his brother. Who is allegedly a fed or something or an ex fed. I don't know. And he, he hires his brother to run counterintelligence to the Michigan illegal intelligence gathering. This is amazing. Please let every single word of all of this be true. We shall see. I don't want to buy. See. I don't want to. I don't want to buy gas in Michigan because I don't want to give the state any money. Has shit on this. <laughs> Is nothing compared to this. I think we. Can Kyle, do you have anything there. in Kyle's corner? <laughs> I do actually. I do. This was a this was a great weekend. This was a great weekend. Um, for I give a shout out to my alma mater, uh, Columbus Grove High School. It was a great weekend here. They won their second round playoffs in football. 
great. The cross country team won their very first uh, state championship in Division Three. Nice. First time that they've done it, and the first time they've have, done have it. You said in your high school history. yet? Hmm. Have you, did you actually say who they are, or did I just yeah, miss I did. that? Oh, okay, my bad. You missed that. I just didn't hear. <laughs> and yeah, and then the and then the the band gets another superior. It just seems like that they do that quite frequently too. So it was a, it was a it was a great weekend overall for Columbus Grove. So so yeah, very 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 proud. Uh, alumni over here this this weekend hell yeah uh spikes also says cj fucking stroud but maybe, yeah cj stroud <laughs> maybe kyle will save that for the maybe that's a sneak yeah. preview to the uh yep Kyle's we'll save that for the next for, one for yep we'll games. save that for the next one all right that's it that's the end of the show tonight's ending music is a columbus band called the wet darlings uh, that is the wet darlings. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the wet darlings. <laughs>